Welcome to episode 13 of Escape the Rat Race Radio. I'm your host, Christian Rodwell, and this is your ticket to escape the nine to five. I mean, the principles of the Million Dollar Blog is that content creation is an amazing way to take you on an incredible journey. How do you get more traffic to your website? It's like, well, you do blogging and you do publicity and you do guest blogging. Like you do whatever you can. You try and get your local radio. That's publicity, but it's inextricably linked to what you do online. So if you really want it and you think your visit, your personal visibility will help your business or your business visibility, then you just have to do it step by step and kind of accept that the more you do, the less uncomfortable it becomes. On this week's episode, I've invited Natasha Courtney-Smith to be my guest. Now, Natasha's background combines national newspaper journalism and publicity with starting, growing and selling her own online business. And since selling her PR business, Talk to the Press, back in 2014, Natasha has not sat around resting on her laurels, I can assure you. Taking all of her skills she had learned and combining them with some newfound knowledge of how to create websites and apply the latest digital marketing strategies, Natasha founded her own digital marketing and PR agency, N Media. And in 2016, she released her first book, The Million Dollar Blog, which became an Amazon bestseller. And from this success, she was invited by Facebook to become one of only eight accredited She Means Business trainers in the UK. Now, Natasha delivers a variety of engaging and effective strategies for online and real world visibility through consulting, mentoring, online events and programs, reinforcing the importance of building visibility for yourself and your business through marketing and PR. Now, I'm really looking forward to hearing Natasha's real life experience of actually selling a business, wondering what to do next. And then in a very short space of time, just three years, building another brand new business whilst looking after the kids. And I'm going to be asking Natasha how she did that in this interview. So I'm sure you want to hear all about that. So let's go over to the interview with Natasha Courtney Smith. Welcome to Escape the Rat Race Radio, Natasha. Pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me on the show. You're more than welcome. And it was really great to meet you a couple of weeks ago. We were actually both at the Shah Wasman's book camp and you were on stage and you were telling everyone, obviously, the amazing success that you've had with your own book, The Million Dollar Blog. And uh, how did you find that day? Did you have lots of fun and make lots of new connections? I loved it, but you didn't come and say hello to me, did you? I did. I did. I was there afterwards. You were at the bottom of the stairs. Okay, you had what so do you look like? There were so many people. It was so overwhelming. <laughs> I actually can't remember. In my mind, I didn't meet any guys on that day, but I obviously oh, did. I love the way oh, your memory oh. plays tricks on you. Oh, I'm glad I made such an impact anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I mean, every time, were you outside the double doors? I yes, was, yeah. I remember you now. So every time I was trying to go somewhere, it was, it was a brilliant day, but I mean, there were just so many people asking questions, which is obviously fantastic. Well, I thought I can't miss the opportunity to to ask you and invite you to come along and, and share everything. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. Know. you. No, it's, it's fantastic. I'm so looking forward to today because often, you know, I invite different guests on the show and various different entrepreneurs, business owners. In fact, last week we had Leon Logothetis, who's currently on Netflix with his program, The Kindness Diaries. Wow. Who really, yeah, he showed a different perspective because he's not chasing wealth. He's not chasing these material things. For him, it's about just having a, a really purposeful life and actually going out there and just giving back. Success means different things for different people. And yeah, um, definitely true. So Natasha, your background yeah. is obviously very much within the PR marketing world. I know that you've been senior feature writer for the Daily Mail. And yeah, you've I mean, had my original own... background was in journalism and, and news uh, before then moving into PR and marketing. So I still start, kind of consider myself a journalist, even though I'm not. I don't know if that's something about journalists where you take on the vacation and you consider yourself a journalist. I still have to stop myself from telling people I'm a journalist because I'm not. 
<laughs> You're not still carrying around a dictaphone no, in your hand. No, I'm not. I'm not. I haven't written. I, I haven't written a piece for ages. So no, I'm not a journalist. So oh. yeah, that was my original background at the Daily Mail. And you built a business up yourself. And yeah. am I correct to say that you successfully sold that business? Yes, I did. About coming up to three years ago, I sold it. And is that when you then decided that you didn't want to go and look for another job, but you actually you now have the experience to go out and help people yourself? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I knew what I wanted to do. I was, you know, that feeling where as days go by, you kind of think you're not getting anywhere. But then when you look back on a period of time, and you think, God, it was less than three years ago, and I actually didn't know what I what I wanted to do or what I was going to do. The only thing I knew was that I was on a no compete agreement. And I was unable to be a journalist for two years. So I was kind of blocked out of the industry for two years. And I was quite happy to do that, because I wanted to move on, you know, I wouldn't, you don't sell a business unless you want to move on. So in my mind, I wanted to move on from journalism. And then the doors were closed behind me. So I had to do something else. I didn't really know what I was going to be doing. And I, I used to, in those early days after selling the business, I used to just go all over the place in my mind. So I'd be thinking, oh, we've always done up houses that we've lived in and moved on. So I would think I'm going to be an interior designer. And then I'd be thinking, no, I can't be an interior designer. Like, you know, that's just, I don't understand that world. And that's not going to work. And I actually, you know, struggled in the beginning to, to think, I used to think I must know something, but what do I know? Like, I must know something that I can turn into value and help other people. But what is it? So I didn't know what I was going to do when I first sold my business at all. But I did trust in myself that I would find something eventually. Yeah, I think that's that's really interesting. And I can relate to that as well, because we were just discussing my background is the music industry. And I think when people come to that kind of turning point in their life where maybe you've been in a career for a certain number of years either you decide that you've kind of come to the end of the road or in your circumstances obviously you were forced to kind of take time out away from that industry yeah but or, I, I did in my heart of hearts want to move on as well and I think you know we all reach that feeling perhaps it's something that you particularly feel I mean I was about 37 when I sold my business you know how most of us we kind of stagger into careers just because it of being in a certain place at a certain time without giving it much thought when we're young of what we really want to be doing. And then next thing you know, you've done 15 years in your career and you're thinking, oh, right, you know, how am I a tabloid journalist? Like, so I think a lot of us reach that and it may be something to do with being mid to late 30s. You reach that turning point and you think, you know, what am I actually doing? Is this what I want to do? You know, I was lucky in that I was able to exit journalism having sold a business. So I was able to exit with money and with my kind of head held high and in like dream circumstances. But the actual reality was I, I didn't want to do it anymore is the actual reality. So when you're thinking about people who are in jobs and want to leave, like even though I was in my own business, I wanted to leave. I very much felt the same way. Because it's a difficult one for a lot of people who are in that situation where they want to leave, but then you've got all the the worries of, well, how am I going to pay the mortgage? And you know, we've got the kids to look after. Yeah, and, yeah. and honestly, I didn't have I didn't have that worry because it became obvious before it happened that it was I was going to be bought out, so I wouldn't have to worry about money. But what I felt is as well before that happened, you know, I'd felt that you. I'd done something, it was working and it was successful. And sometimes I used to find myself hoping it would go wrong because I just didn't enjoy it. So it was that awful thing of being good at something, which a lot of people are by the time they're in the mid thirties and then not enjoying it. And you're thinking, how can I feel this way when I, when I'm good at this and it's what I'm known for. My professional reputation is built around this and you feel resentful of yourself for daring to not enjoy it or daring to want something different. So it sounds you got that touch of the entrepreneurial spirit within you, Natasha, because entrepreneurs are people who naturally go out looking for problems to solve and they like the challenge. Would you say that that's something that's always been within you or something you yeah, really know? Yeah, I learned? mean, I, I'd actually, I've got another business very randomly, which you don't, you don't know about at all, because I never talk about it, which um, basically sells souvenir cotton tote bags on Portobello Road. So it sells bags to souvenirs I, I import and wholesale them. And I felt that at the time I sold Talk to the Press, which is the business I had, I felt I'd managed to do two things. Like I'd set up my bag company, it still runs now, the Notting Hill Shopping Bag, they're very popular souvenirs. And I'd set up Talk to the Press. And I, even though I didn't know what I was going to do, I felt I had to trust in myself to be able to find something to do, to create something else again from scratch. Let's look at where you're at now then, Natasha, because we know you very much for the being the author of the Million Dollar Blog book, yeah. which has done tremendously well and I'm sure has opened up so many doors for you. Yeah, so it I'm, really has. It really has. When was the release date of, of that book? Um, that was only in September last year. So it's been out for, um, well, no, it's October, like end of September last year. So end of September 2016. And, and what led up to you writing and releasing that book? How did that come about? So 
in all that period of not knowing what I was going to do and and also not being able to really know what I knew, not being able to extrapolate. I think when you first sell a business, you're in a state of shock. Like you can't believe that's happened, even though you want it to happen. It's like, oh my goodness, am I actually free? Like, do I actually get to go now and take this money? Like that's the genius thing about it. So you're kind of in a state of shock. And I was going through that period of not knowing what I was going to do and thinking, what do I even know? And But then people started asking me, bearing in mind talk, talk to the press had been an online business. People started asking me for help with their own websites and their publicity. So just people in my network, so people who I knew. And that's how it all started. You know, I, I also went back to college, as I, I think I said at the uh, the day where we met the other day, because I thought whatever I could do next, I'm going to need various skills and I could use this time to learn things that I don't know. So although I'd been managing a website and online business since 2008, I didn't know how to build a website. So I went to college and learned how to do web design, building them from scratch, and also learned video editing. And because I was kind of talking to people about being at college and people were finding that interesting, and they knew my background, people started asking me to build them websites. I thought, God, okay, fine. What a strange thing to do. You know, I'll build a website, no problem. You know, so I then started getting photographers who I'd worked with at the Daily Mail because people were building websites. And I was like, I can't build a site with these awful pictures, you know, you're going to have to have a proper photo shoot. So I put together a shoot with a photographer I'd worked with at the mail, proper locations, just doing what we'd done on magazines and in newspapers, you take for granted, okay, probably like you and, you know, putting together a music video, you just take those skills for granted. Obviously, the photos came out and were lovely and built these sites, they looked really good because of the photography. And and that's how the whole kind of digital agency and, and what I do now, which is a mix of agency and training and mentoring came about. Some of the things that that you've you've learned, and I love the fact that you you actually went back and you went to college to learn the skills. You know, I think that's a really yeah. important thing to, for people to focus on here. Is that sometimes you do you know almost need to take a step back and say, okay, well, look, you know, I, I need to invest maybe a year just really learning the skills or building the network, and then you know, people. We've got this millennial culture, obviously, Simon Sinek talks about this, you know, instant gratification, wanting everything now and expecting a business just to, you know, go, poof, there you go, success and money coming straight away. But actually, there's a lot of hard work that goes in beforehand, isn't there? So Yeah, I mean, I would say in terms of that transition, it probably took about a year. So it was probably around, I sold the business in May 2014, I probably started getting my first paid websites in April 2015. Now, of that year that had gone by, I spent four months supposedly on time off during which I actually look how sad I am. I actually went back to the office of my company, which I still had the lease for and it was empty and used to just go in there and kind of shuffle around by myself. Then I went to college. And and in that time, I was kind of, you know, really anxious. What am I going to do? How am I going to make you know, what, what's my new opportunity? What doors going to open? I also went to college and I did web design, I learned video and I also did interior design. So I was quite undecided. But I found this brilliant local college where you could do all these courses for hardly any money. And I even did something in like furniture restoration. I mean, that's how I was, you know, trying to find my way It was things weren't clear cut. But I thought it's cheap. It got me out. It got me friends. It got me into a new group of people. And then people started asking me to help them with their stuff, their websites, um, which I was very much kind of doing for free in the beginning, like building websites. I'd have to charge for photography, but I was kind of like, well, I'm not, I'm not really a web developer. So, okay, I'll do this site. But I'm, and I was also like supposedly supposed to be on a year off. So I didn't, in my mind, I didn't really feel that I could be charging them for anything. And it was only in about April, 2015. So a year on, I thought, actually, I can properly do this. And my sites are just as good as any fancy agency because I'm bringing together all the skills I have, like getting the right photos, my content skills from years of journalism. Like I know exactly what I'm doing. And also all the skills and knowledge of having run an online business since 2008 that was really, that basically was about generating leads and converting them. It, but it took me a year to kind of realize that value and realize what the value was and what the offer was going to be. So mm-hmm. it's definitely not an immediate thing. I mean, you asked about the book, The Million Dollar Blog. With regard to that, I mean, I was very lucky in that people started asking me to do talks very quickly. And I think that's because with Talk to the Press, I'd I'd made myself quite known in that small business circuit as like a female entrepreneur here in the UK. And I'd won a few awards, like, I don't know, the Startup Awards, Women in Business, like those sorts of awards via Talk to the Press. So because of that, I was in with a few small business agencies anyway, such as Enterprise Nation, as in they knew me. Um, and they then started saying they knew I was kind of hanging around just, you know, 
trying to work out what he's going to do. And they said, well, come and do a talk on this. Because in their minds, and, and this is correct, but I didn't see it that way whilst I was in the, in the midst of it all. You know, I'd sold an online business. So therefore, I could talk about online business and content and um, everything that comes with an online business from lead generation, email lists, paid traffic. I mean, that's what I'd been doing for the previous six years. Is it fair to say that you really advocate now that no matter who you are, you can start a blog and promote yourself and your business and monetize it. And that really is the basis for the Million Dollar Blog book. Yeah, so the, that book came about because of one of these up, um, talks I was asked to give, which was um, at a festival, it was called the Festival of Female Entrepreneurs, and I had to talk about going pro at blogging. Now, what I'd done with Talk to the Press and how Talk to the Press had consistently ranked top of search engines was through a content strategy, so through regular blog posts and building out the website that way. So when I gave this talk, I just thought it was absolutely packed with people desperate to know like and I thought and and from that I then pitched it as a book um and got a book deal for it so I mean the principles of the million dollar blog is that content creation is an amazing way to take you on an incredible journey particularly I mean if you have a real world business absolutely and and even if you look at what I've done you know one of the reasons I was asked to give those talks and asked to um, and was able to get a book book deal is because once I decided so around about April 2015 when I decided okay I'm going to take this digital marketing thing seriously the only thing I knew to do to promote myself was to write articles for my website because that's what I'd always done with talk to the press and because I was writing and publishing content people took me seriously and that showed up in the fact that I was so quickly able to be speaking to big audiences at the Festival of Female Entrepreneurs and getting a book deal so uh, from my you know my own personal experience absolutely you can do things really quickly once you start creating content in your book you've got interviews uh, from people such as Seth Godin and, and yeah. Grant Cardone so how did you go about you know attracting those people do you know Grant Cardone uh, not personally no oh, but you know of him you know of him yes. do you yes, I, I love do, yeah. Grant Cardone he's my all-time favorite because he's just so hilarious and completely inappropriate um, I basically emailed Seth Godin and said, you know, this is what I've done. I was writing this book and I thought he's not going to say no. So he's going to say no or he's not going to reply. So he's going to be the first person I email. I think the brilliance or, or the useful thing about being a journalist beforehand is you're used to putting in for interviews. You know, you're used to asking people to talk to you. So I thought, fine, the brief of the book is it's half practical advice and how to and the other half inspirational interviews. So I thought, great, I'll put in for 100 people and 50 will say yes. You know, you, take, you don't take it that personally. But obviously, I wanted Seth. So I emailed him. I thought he's never going to say yes. I'm not an author. I'm a nobody. But I'll email him first so I can get the rejection out of the way. And he emailed back five minutes later and said yes, which was amazing. Wow. So from that, I then was able to say to everybody else, well, Seth Godin's in my book. And literally by the end of the day, his interview was done. So then I was literally saying to everyone else, Seth Godin's in my book. With Grant Cardone, actually, I just wanted to interview him because I love his book. I mean, his, both his books, 10X and his new one, which is like, if you're not first, you're last. And I emailed them and didn't hear anything back. And then I just emailed again and said, look, you know, I'm a big fan from the UK. I just found him online. I, and I think I'd read his books and then looked him up online. I'd read 10X and then looked him up online and started following him. I know he's a real Marmite character. I just think he's hilariously unashamedly himself so for yeah. that I really like him so anyway once I emailed the second time and I said come on I'm a big fan from the UK will you do this interview they said yes oh that's brilliant yeah awesome. and and who really is the book aimed at so for listeners now who maybe are starting up their own business they're looking to build their brand and you know one of the questions is oh I don't have time for blogging or how long is it going to take to make an impact and things like this yeah, so uh, and it does take common... time I mean as, yeah. as does social media <clears throat> of it takes time it's aimed at people who are who are just interested in knowing and understanding a the business model of the content creation world and blogging and how they use blogging to either build their personal brand or their business I think the thing with blogging is there's different business models and, and not everybody understands this so there's what I've done for years which is content marketing to build a business and what I do now for myself and my own personal brand and that's also the same as kind of content marketing for an expert personality so what you would do as a coach or anything that type of blogging and then there's blogging to be a blog star which is almost the same as being a magazine or a media brand it's just rather than being a kind of a brand with no face you're channeling that interest through yourself 
So, I mean, I, you know, for me, the Million Dollar Blog was a great book to write because I learned a lot about the world of blog stardom, which I didn't really know that much about before. Plus, I was able to kind of ex- extract, you know, when I told you I was thinking to myself after talk to the press, well, what do I actually know about? Actually, what I know about in terms of content for businesses, I extracted into that book. And then you realize, oh, yeah, I do know something after all. And this has now led to some online courses that you've yes. also created. Um, Well, at the same time, I was creating online courses. So I mean, I'd started, you know, the agency side of my business started building websites. Obviously, I know the online world and how it works and the various different routes to monetization. And anyone in this world generally thinks they want to have their fingers in a few pies, like they want to have online courses, they want to have mentoring, they want to be doing training, they want to be doing speaking, and maybe they want an agency side as well. Like, you know, they all fit together perfectly. So in my mind, I was like, I must do some online courses. And and my first online course, which is um, Lights, Camera, Action, which is just how to use film, edit and present videos using iMovie was basically for my clients because I had all these websites going live. A website going live is funny because you think it's the end of the journey, but in actual fact, it's it's the beginning, isn't it? So you'd be working with someone on their site for a few months, possibly, and then it goes live. And then they suddenly realise this is not the end of their journey. It's the beginning, like next thing they've got to do you know, they want to do all this stuff. And one of the things that I noticed was a real need for people to do was video. And obviously, that's one of the things I'd learned during my year of whatever you'd call it, my year of redirection. So so that's one of my courses. Yeah. And you've just launched a new one there, which is how to use Facebook and Instagram for business as well. Yes. And that's because this amazing opportunity came about from Facebook, um, who asked me to go to Facebook HQ and train with them directly and, and become an official Facebook trainer. So I came away with 10 slide decks, all branded from Facebook and Instagram. And I was like, my goodness, I've got to put these together into an online (laughs) program, because when else do you get an opportunity like that? And did you do your first presentation last week? Was that correct? Yes, I did my first presentation for Facebook last week at the British Library. Oh, wonderful. And how did that go? It went really well. And I just did one today on a webinar as well. It went really well. I think what's really interesting is when you're delivering training on behalf of somebody else, i.e. Facebook, you're not restricted, but you know, you've got to follow all the trainers. That deliver, we're all delivering the same content, all eight of us. You're going into an audience. You don't know how advanced they are on Facebook or what they know and what they don't know. I always think everybody knows the same as the stuff that I know. And it's, it's always fascinating to see that actually that what I might know, I've learned over almost 10 years now of being online, that other people just that's not their world. So they really don't know this stuff. I think just even in the 20 minutes we've been speaking to Natasha, you know, it's clear to, to see your energy and that you're just like get up and go and just do it uh, attitude, which I think speaks volumes for the, the, the rapid success that you've had over the last few years. I just want to share some words of advice, encouragement for our listeners who, who maybe are still straddling that full time job and, you know, coming home in the evening having to look after family, trying to fit a couple of hours in to work on their their business. Now, some of the clients that you work with probably have some similar challenges. Are there any tips or advice or or anything that you can share for someone who who feels that time is a real issue? I mean, what should they be focusing on? I feel that time's an issue too. You know, I've got two young children and definitely at the time I sold Talk to the Press, I was completely exhausted. And that's probably another reason I'd kind of got so low and wanting to leave it and wanting just thinking I can't do this anymore because actually I'd had very very young children at that point I don't know in terms of advice I mean I think one thing I tend not to do is I tend not to watch tv because we do have a limited time and and also I don't think I'm a great parent like you know I'm totally on my iphone whilst parenting my children which is really bad and then I I even said to my partner this morning I'm such a bad mum because my son and, and also get help so I have we have an au pair now, but at various points in that year after Talk to the Press, I had no childcare. It's really hard because obviously you want to be a good mum, but you can't, you equally, you can't achieve your goals if you don't have childcare. You just can't. It's impossible. And mm. I have friends who are really creative people who've got great ideas, but have no childcare and they kind of can't do what they want to do. I, I don't think there's any way around that. Like you have to get help. You touched on it briefly there. You mentioned goals. Do you set goals for yourself, Natasha? Do you kind of look at the year ahead and say, right, this is what I want to set out to achieve this year? Yeah, or do you break I mean, I did this thing called The Winner's Bible, which was a book. I might have it here. I'm just looking around to see if I could see it. It's a book I read a long time ago, like probably about 10 years ago. And it said about, it's all sorts of exercises. You keep a little folder and you do all these exercises, you fill them out. And then you, at any point you can kind of, it's not like you've done, you've set your goals. So you have to stick to them forever. You can change your goals around. So it's kind of a flexible thing because obviously we all change and we all change our minds and change directions. You're meant to then, once you've kind of been through this winner's Bible workbook and done your own exercises, you're then meant to look at it every day. I definitely don't do that. In fact, I don't think I've looked at my winner's Bible from, since January. 
But generally, this is a typical experience over Christmas in our house. And my partner does this book too. It's between Christmas and New Year. We have, we must update our winner's Bibles. And we get out our folders and we kind of map out the year. And just it is a kind of wedge. It's it's a mix of kind of practical goals. But also, what's your business going to look like when it's fully grown? So if you say the agency side of my business now, which is still quite new, you know, I only started doing this a couple of years ago. It's like when it's fully grown, what could it be like? And it could have like amazing Google offices and 20 young, funky people working there or whatever. So I do, to some extent, I'm aware, I don't look at my Winner's Bible every day or think about it all the time. But to some extent, I do set goals. Yeah. And try and see see how things could be in the future. No, I, I'm always interested at, at how successful people do plan the future because some people just live for the moment and just kind of take it day by day, and and others obviously have that that larger perspective. So um, I guess it's finding just what works for you, isn't it? As an yeah, individual? and I think if I did my if I did do what the Winners Bible book tells you to do, I every day first thing in the morning look at your Winners Bible. I'd probably be a lot more focused. I mean, I think mm. I'm quite focused anyway. But you can obviously when I read about what really successful do successful people do, you think, wow, they are on another level i mean that book the new tim ferris book tools of titans have you read that I haven't read it but I've, I've many people have told me some of some of the uh, uh i mean content, it, it? yeah and some of what the people actually do it's insane it makes you feel like such a loser when you're reading it you're just like oh my god i'm the world's biggest loser like this person like their focus and dedication is immense that's the difference isn't it you know that really is the difference it, it's the consistency of of these good habits and I think just discipline is so important as well you know having a great idea but actually then achieving it is is really just having the discipline to, to stick to it in, in many yeah, cases and also I think we all feel that on a day-to-day basis you're not getting where you want to go when you look back I think that's key and I'm really bad at thinking on day-to-day basis oh this isn't working or that isn't working But you have to kind of look back over larger timescales because then you can see that you have come a long way. But I don't think anyone would see that on a day to day basis. Probably even the people featured in Tools Tools of Titans day to day might feel they're just shuffling along a bit, hoping for the best. You know, who knows? Looking at what what you've got going on right now, then, Natasha, I know that you've you've recently launched your own Facebook group, which is... uh, Hashtag get visible. Hashtag get which... visible. I'm quite late to having a Facebook group, actually. I was worried That's about fine. it. I was worried it was going to be, no. you know, I was worried it's going to be too difficult to manage. And but actually, I've realised it's 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 um it's it's good. So you're getting some great interaction in there, aren't you? And uh, I think the key is, you know, you you personally have got to drive that and show up every day as well. Yeah, you have. And actually, some days I don't show up, and then I feel really guilty. <laughs> like this, <laughs> earlier this week, I was ill, and I was just like, oh my god, I haven't been on a Facebook group. But anyway, it's definitely great, good for interaction. So I've got my Facebook group. Yeah, that's quite a new project for me right now. Yeah, no, I'd highly encourage everyone to, to go to Facebook, search hashtag get visible and, and join the group because there's some really wonderful stuff you're sharing because we've touched on blogging, we've touched on the importance of social content. I mean, there's many other aspects that you cover, isn't there? Like traditional publicity. Yeah, and, and I think that's because obviously it's partly because of my background and and one of the, actually some of the first, when I was first, people were first asking me to do things after Talk to the Press, I had two PR clients who are really well known, Karis Matthews and Jeremy Vine as publicity clients. And, and a lot of what Talk to the Press did as well, depending on who the person was getting in touch would be like publicity for campaigns and publicity for causes, you know, people who didn't have big budgets for PR. So in my mind, all these things are the same. And and I find it kind of both fascinating and frustrating the way they're divided into two worlds, like, oh, you need a publicist and you need a digital marketing agency. It's like, it's the same thing. And actually, I was just doing my webinar earlier about Facebook. I was doing the Facebook training on a webinar at lunchtime. And we were, I was talking about how before you run Facebook ads, you have to build your custom audiences. And one way to do that is to increase traffic for your website. And then people is, well, how do you get more traffic to your website? It's like, well, you do blogging and you do publicity and you do guest blogging. Like you do whatever you can. You try and get your local radio. That's publicity, but it's inextricably linked to what you do online. And, and you mentioned Facebook ads there. I know this is something that you're really passionate about as well, isn't it? And you've been testing yeah, for I know, what? I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like, I know. I mean, don't forget in my mind, these are all the same thing. I know like, you know, they can be broken out into disciplines. I'm like, it's all the same thing. No, I, I love Facebook ads. Yeah. 
So, okay, well, I think at this stage of the interview, it's time that we enter our quick fire round. Are you up for oh, a little no. bit of fun? Yes, okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to fire four questions at you and we'll just get your first answer on these. Okay. So the first one is, what's happening? So what's the one app that you've recently discovered which you just can't stop using? Trello. Oh, yeah. I kind of swap between Trello and a couple of others, but Trello's awesome, really is. What, what, yeah. what other one do you use? Basecamp. Oh, I don't like Basecamp. I've just recently taken on a, a virtual assistant and we're using Asana at the moment, which is good for task oh, okay. management. But I prefer Trello yeah. for just dropping in those ideas that you just need to clear your head, document it, and then you can come back. And uh, I use Trello for tasks for to-do lists as well. I love deleting the cards when it's done. It's like the high <laughs> of my day. <laughs> yeah. Trello. And it's great. So yeah, it's great to keep conversations on one Trello card rather than have them going on over email. Yeah. No, Trello works really well. It's very good on the mobile app as well. So that's important. Yeah. Excellent. So the next one is daily discipline. So what's the one habit or activity that keeps you focused and on the path every day? Oh, God, this is where I'm really bad at because I should say reading my winner's Bible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just battling through emails. Just I don't know. I, I don't, don't know have if I have a daily original. discipline. <laughs> no, I don't. And this is why I'm not in the Tools of Titan book, because the people <laughs> in the Tools of Titan book, like get up, drink water and lemon, do for 10 minutes of medication, meditation, yeah. make their beds, run around the park, you know, then do 20 minutes of visualization. And I read that and I'm like, oh, my God, no, I've got young children. You know, I get up. I'm firefighting with the kids. I'm trying to get them dressed. Then you discover like typical this morning, we come down, the cat flap's not working. That's that's what goes on around this house. So the cats are like stuck outside and very angry. And I'm like, how am I meant to fix a cat flap? I have no idea. So no, and sorry, not very much inspiration there. Well, no, I think that's equally as, as beneficial because you're still building a, a hugely successful business and profile and writing books. And, you know, it, it, we don't all have to be these perfect, you know, examples um, to, to show that this is possible. You know, anyone can do this if they get out there and just take action, which is. Super yeah, important. yeah. One thing I do do is just I think I just keep going on the next step. I think yeah. that's one thing I feel myself I do, even even if you know you're feeling, oh, things aren't going fast enough. I just still keep going regardless. So next one. Rejection recall. So every entrepreneur has experienced bumps in their journey. Can you recall the biggest rejection or low point in your business, Natasha? And how did you bounce back from that? Oh God. Was there a time when know. all the chips stacked against you and you're like, ah, oh, just where am I gonna turn from here? It could be either with this business or the previous business. I mean, it would have been with Talk to the Press because this business has been a lot more joyful. Yeah, I mean, with Talk to the Press, there was a time where I built myself a profile for doing what I did in Talk to the Press. And there was a time when other people with similar kind of online businesses took against me and, and got together in a group. I I'm still don't understand why. I decided to go pitch an article to The Guardian about how I was... Um, claiming that I'd invented a space that I hadn't invented. It was all completely preposterous. But I was about 32 and I was quite sensitive and I took it very personally. I was very, very upset and I just didn't understand it. And that felt really overwhelming. And I felt, I don't know, you just feel kind of like everyone's against me. I felt really scared. I kept thinking, have I done something wrong? Why is this even happening? And then looking back, you can totally see that it's professional jealousy. Mm. So that was a real learning curve. And now I wouldn't really care. I wouldn't really care what someone else said. And I would just be laughing about that. Like if someone, the whole thing was completely preposterous, but that preposterous, but that really did get me down. And, and, and that's typical, isn't it, of, of being a business owner and entrepreneur is that everything will seem a challenge the first time. And then when you overcome it, you know, then it's not going to be so difficult next time. And it comes when you around. overcome it, something like that, you just think now I look back and think, what the hell was going on? Like, that was just ridiculous. The whole thing was ridiculous. Like, what are we 16 and in school? It doesn't feel like that the first time it happens to you I guess it was it's the equivalent of getting haters apart from the fact they weren't and trolls apart from they we weren't hating and trolling me on Twitter it was like they were hating and trolling me to my peers in my profession i.e the people at the media guardian which was just incredibly hurtful well you've certainly gone on to show them now anyway so yeah <laughs> so the final one in the quick fire round hopefully slightly easier this one is mentor the mentor so we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our mentors 
what yeah. would be your advice for our listeners in finding the right mentor? And do you have mentors yourself, yes. Natasha? And God, I've always go? had mentors. So I have three main mentors. One is a woman called Emma Wimhurst who mentored me with Talk to the Press. And she'd previously, she, I don't think she does mentoring anymore. She'd previously um, sold an online business. The other is obviously Shah Wasmond, who we met at her event. So I've been doing private mentoring with Shah. And then also Steve Bolton, who is the founder of platinum property partners who I've known for several years and um, offers me his wisdom and advice so yeah I mean mentoring is absolutely imperative and when when I started um, with Talk to the Press I joined a training organization called it was James Kahn's Entrepreneurs Business Academy and it was like an accelerator program for business owners I was given a mentor on that and it was this guy and I remember it's like what you're saying about choosing the right mentor because this guy came around and he told me he lived in a bit, this is going to sound so ridiculous, but he wasn't that charismatic. I was a bit freaked out by the fact it was a guy. And he told me he lived in a basement flat in, in Kilburn. Okay. And at the time I was living in a really nice space in Notting Hill. And I was just like, I don't really look up to you because you just told me you live in a basement flat. And it wasn't even Kilburn. It was somewhere else, but somewhere quite North London that was quite far away and quite far out. And I was like, I want a mentor who I want to be, like sure. someone who is where I want to be. And I just didn't relate to this guy or his life. So I actually complained to James Khan's Academy and said, I want a different mentor. And that's when they put me on to Emma. And I went around to Emma's house. You know, this was about 10 years ago. She was about 45 at the time. She had three kids, a lovely house. She'd sold a business. She was a female entrepreneur. She had a swing pool in her garden. And I thought that's more like the sort of mentor that I need because she's a woman. She's got three kids. I think I might have just been about to have, I don't think I'd even had kids at that point, actually. It is really important to find the right mentor for you because it made such a difference to me. I suppose as a a woman, you're always thinking, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to deal with the kids issue and the business issue? And it made such a difference to me having a mentor who had done it. And actually what she'd done is what I've now done. Although I don't have three kids, I have two. And living in a really lovely house and, and, and witnessing firsthand the kind of fruits of her success meant that it was a real driver for me because I could see it playing out in front of me. So, yeah, it made such a difference changing mentors to her. Brilliant stuff. Well, look, we're... We're nearly at the end of the interview, Natasha. The time has just flown by so quickly. But there's, there's a couple more questions I just would yeah. like to ask before before we round things off. There may be people listening now who who are slightly more introverted and the whole idea of press and PR is, is just freaking them out and scaring them. But they, they know that it's important and integral to to building their profile online. What's your advice for those for those guys and girls out there? Oh, do you know what? I live in this world where everybody I know, because I've come from the media, is like massively ego driven and all just desperate for PR. Do you think people are really worried about PR? Because someone else said this to me the other day and I was like, oh, my God, really? I thought everybody wanted to be in the newspaper. (laughs) Do you think it really worries people? I I certainly think when you stick a camera in front of people's face, a lot of people just recoil and, uh, and, and just freeze. So overcoming actually just recording videos, I think. Is, yeah, is I mean, big... I, I think a video is a bigger issue for people than the thought of kind of publicity. I just, you just, I guess it's like keeping focused on the on the long term. I mean, you know, I do live videos into my Facebook group and I find it a bit like, oh God, this is a, this is a leap. I mean, it's about pushing your comfort zone, isn't it? And once you've done it once, it doesn't seem so bad the next time. I would agree. And, and I think the other thing is it, is, it, is it does work. Like if it's what you really want, then it's what has to be done. If you're not, you know, it's, what's very clear in, in, in my world is that there's some people like some of my clients like Jeremy Vine who, you know, they have the mainstream media in their beck and call because of the fact that they're kind of, you know, they're, they're celebrities and they can get online coverage and everything's much easier. But if you're not a person like that, then the only option is to build it step by step using the internet. And actually, that's what someone like Grant Cardone has done. And he even told me that. He said, I've built this fame step by step, post by post. And I thought, wow, that's so kind of apt you know he seems like a big visible person but he's not really he's just like any other guy who owns a successful business so if you really want it and you think your visit your personal visibility will help your business or your business visibility then you just have to do it step by step and kind of accept that the more you do the less uncomfortable it becomes it's been around three years or so since you gave up the business any regrets or words of advice for our listeners who are looking to cross that bridge from an employee to entrepreneur and maybe being held back by sort of the fear of giving up the secure job what would be your words of advice for those people listening now I don't know sometimes you can look back with rose tinted glasses and I can think oh I should have I should have negotiated a better deal or I should have retained some shares or I should have you know you can always look back and think you could have done things differently but the point is is if you can 
move on from what you don't want to do in some way that makes it work. So, you know, I was able to move on with money and, and, and change my life and get the freedom of time in which to do that. Then you just, it's just about making sure that happens, but it is very scary. It's definitely scary. And I, and I also felt scared when I realized I was going to be locked out of being a journalist, but sometimes being locked out is, is the only way. And actually drawing that line is the only way you can do it. I mean, I know as soon as I sold um, talk to the press people were asking me like the guy who that I was asked straight away to come in and be um, deputy features editor at the mail on Sunday and it's like I could have done that and I'd have been and then I just slipped straight back in slowly but surely into working for newspapers so you kind of need to have that line drawn so that you can't slip back in so I was you know it was lucky I was able to sort of say no I'm sorry I'm not allowed to work as a journalist right now to force you to do something else so I think it's just it, with anything it's just it, that taking the plunge feeling is horrible and it is frightening and obviously there's no guarantee and you can't you can't look ahead and see how it's going to work out but I do believe that that whole thing you know I used to say to myself I believe a new door will open and, and the doors didn't open straight away and I used to sometimes think where the hell are these doors like where are they when are they going to open but then they do open and then you don't really realize they're opening and then only when you look back you think oh my god everything changed it's a funny that the entrepreneur goes through of really where you think, oh my god, like you know, I'm either I'm down to my like my last pennies, or I just don't know how I'm going to pull this thing off. And then something always just seems to happen at the last minute. I don't know if you've experienced that at times as well. I always have that fear of. I always joke with my partner, "What if I end up homeless and living in the street?" And he's like, "Oh my god, you're just absolutely ridiculous." But I, mean, I have been really lucky in terms of having. And I do think I, I'm really mindful of this. Like I had that security from having sold talk to the press, but it's more that feeling of when you're a driven person, you want to succeed. And, you know, I can't bear the thought of of things going wrong and not succeeding. And, and that plagues me, but somehow, and I think when you've got that feeling inside you, that worry of things going wrong or run, or running out of money, then somehow that propels you to take enough actions that leads to things work, then working out. Well, Natasha, I've been very inspired by our conversation today and I have no doubt whatsoever that there's some really, really amazing things in store for you throughout the rest of 2017 and, and far, far beyond. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you for having Thank me on. Yeah, and I'm sure people will be wanting to connect with you. So we've we've said about the Facebook group, where else uh, should people go to uh, to track you down online? So, well, on my website, natashacourtneysmith.com, I've got quite a lot of free training on there about various things like using video for your brand, planning out your website. So for people who are in the launch phases, they should visit my website because and go to the free resources section. And also um, how to promote yourself and your business is free training on all of those things. Um, and on Instagram, I'm at Natasha Courtney Smith. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview there with Natasha. I certainly found that really interesting and very inspiring, actually. Natasha clearly has a vision and used her experience in the PR publicity world and just took those transferable skills and, and started applying them in the real life marketplace, seeing what problems existed. Friends started to ask her, how is she doing it? How could she help them? And that just organically grew into the business that she now owns today. These has opened so many doors, such as writing a book, becoming an Amazon bestseller, being asked to come and speak on many events across the UK, and now, of course, the accolade of being one of just eight accredited Facebook trainers in the UK. So really, anything is possible if you put your mind to it and you just are consistent with the steps that you take each day. And you heard there that Natasha, she's not one for having massive five-year plans. She just knows that she has to take action and make some progress every day. And I think as long as you have the right team around you, and she talked of the importance of having the right mentors, then you can see real rapid results in the space of 12 to 24 months in your own business. Now, if you want to expose yourself out there to the masses online, then I highly recommend go and check out Natasha's Facebook group, which is hashtag get visible. If you would like to check out any of Natasha's online courses, then you can find all of those on the Escape the Rat Race official website. Just head along to www.etrr.online forward slash shop 
and you'll find Natasha's online courses along with many others to help you with your branding and building your business. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Facebook group for Escape the Rat Race whilst you're there. And you just got to type in Escape the Rat Race within 12 months and you'll find our private group. So please do come and join us. Thanking you for your attention and time once again today. Wishing you a wonderful week. Get out there and just do it. See ya.